Hello and welcome to our Triple Seat Floor Plans new user training. Whether you're new to Triple Seat or a seasoned user, you'll find the floor plans feature incredibly useful. It lets you easily create diagrams and walkthroughs for both your customers and internal teams. Integrated into Triple Seat, Floor Plans benefits from the same top notch support and resources you've come to expect. In this training, we will cover how to set up the integration, create floor plans, and share floor plans with your guests. To get started, we first want to introduce you to Triple Seat Floor Plans, our new intuitive and collaborative event diagramming solution. It lets you visualize, customize, and optimize your event layouts. With floor plans, you can create to scale diagrams in minutes with our user-friendly interface, keep your team and vendor partners aligned and informed with easily shareable floor plans, and collaborate in real time with clients and team members to make layout changes on the fly. We will start by quickly creating and sharing a basic floor plan. Then I will walk you through how to do this on your own with our example event, along with additional features such as 3D layouts and some quick tips and tools. I will start with an existing birthday event. Once the triple seat floor plans integration is turned on, I will see the create a floor plan button on the right hand side of any event. I will select that button, which will bring me to the floor plans dashboard for my event. I will click to view my space and select start from scratch. Once my design has loaded, I will begin adding items to my floor plan. I will drag and drop tables onto the floor plan. I can see a number at the top that shows me how many guests can be accommodated based on my table so far. The guest count for my event is 30, so this looks great. I want to ensure my tables are aligned and evenly spaced. To do so, I will select all the tables, click align, and align the tables in the middle. When I have added all the items that I want, I will select the save and export button. This button sends my diagram and setup images to my triple seat event, as well as a PDF image to the event owner's email. When I go back to my event, I can see that a triple seat floor plans tab has been created. I can see the floor plan I created along with a fly through video. Since I did not go into 3D, I do not have any additional 3D floor plans or images to show. We will see 3D floor plans later on. I can share this floor plan and fly through video in discussions, documents, and many places where I use freeform text boxes. For example, I want to add this 2D image to my BEO, so I will navigate to the document and right click within the text box for the setup field. Now my BEO has a floor plan. So that's a quick overview of how to create floor plans and add them to your events. Now let's go through setting up the integration. To get started with Triple Seat Floor Plans, I need to connect my Floor Plans account to Triple Seat. I need to have the appropriate settings access to do so. Once the Floor Plans team has created my spaces and they are ready to use, I will turn on the integration by heading to Settings, Integrations, and scrolling down to Triple Seat Floor Plans. My integration is already turned on, but the first step you do is toggle this button to on. Then you are brought to a page that will prompt you to log in to your floor plans account. Once you've entered your login, you will click authorize app. Once your floor plans account is connected, the next step is to map your triple seat locations to corresponding locations in triple seat floor plans. On the next page, all of your locations will be listed and you will select the name of the corresponding triple seat floor plans location from the drop down on the right. When finished, click update. Please note that if both triple seat and triple seat floor plans only have one location listed, I will not need to complete this step. Once the locations have been mapped, the next step is to map the individual floor plans. You will click map triple seat floor plans rooms. For each room in triple seat, you will select the room name and floor plans. I've already done this step. You can see that my triple seat room names match the floor plans names. Once you have finished assigning a triple seat room to the corresponding floor plans room, click update mapping at the bottom. If I need to adjust this at any time, I can come back in and use the edit button at the top right. Now that floor plans is set up, I am ready to start using floor plans within my events. We are going to walk through creating a floor plan for my new event, just like we did earlier, but with some additional features. 
Now that the triple seat floor plans integration is turned on, I will see the create a floor plan button on the right hand side of any event. When I hover over the button, I have three options to select from the drop down. The first is to create a new event, which creates a corresponding event in triple seat floor plans. This option should be used when the event is created in triple seat, but has not yet been created in floor plans. This is the option that we used earlier and what I will be using in this video. Cloning lets you select a floor plan that you've already created for another event. When I click clone, a list of events with floor plans will appear. I would use this option when I've copied an event in triple seat and want to use the floor plans from that original event. We will go into the clone option in a future video. The last option is to link an existing event in triple seat floor plans. This should be used when you have an existing event in floor plans and you need to link the triple seat event to that already created floor plans event. I'm going to select the first option, create a new event, which opens a new triple seat floor plans tab where a corresponding event has automatically been created in floor plans. The event name, location, date, and guest count carry over. I will select view your space and I have the option to choose a template or start from scratch. We will learn more about creating templates in a future video. For now, I will select start from scratch and select my room. When visiting floor plans for the first time, you will be given an option of where you want to start in 2D or 3D. For my event, I like to quickly map the layout of the tables and chairs, so I like to start in 2D, but it is up to you. You can change your site preferences at any time. Regardless of a view I choose, anything I create or edit in one view will automatically update for the other view and I can quickly move between views. All views speak to each other. We will see what the floor plan will look like in 3D and 3D top-down view once I've added my items. Once my design has loaded, we will first focus on the many options I have at the top. Moving from left to right at the top of my floor plan, I can see the name of my event and the room name, which have come over from triple seat. I can see what version I'm working out of, and when I click, I can rename my version and create additional versions. Selecting save and export will save my design and send it to my triple seat event. Next, I have undo and redo options. Key commands will also work to redo, undo, copy, paste, and more. I can see my guest counter, which includes the number of tables, chairs, and seating, which will automatically update based on what I add to the floor plan. I have layers where I can select and deselect based on what I want to see. This button will bring me to 3D, and the cart option will provide an itemized list of all items that have been added to my floor plan, along with unit prices and costs if applicable. This list can be downloaded. Now I will focus on my options on the left hand side and I will begin adding to my floor plan. I will navigate to the floor plan section and select table. The default options are 60 inch round and 72 inch rectangle. I can use these tables, add another table type by clicking here, or click on the table to edit and see more options. When I go to edit by selecting edit this table or clicking the pencil icon, I can see I have lots of different configure options. I can first select a table shape, then I can click on the 3D image if needed to change the table or chair. Venue provided notations appear because these items were tagged as venue provided during onboarding. I will use the 60 inch round tables for this floor plan. To add just one or a few tables, I can either drag and drop or select add to space. A best practice to add multiple tables to take up the entire space and ensure tables are aligned is to select area layout and then start lasso. The tables will appear along with a number at the top that shows me how many guests can be accommodated. The guest count for my event is 40, so this looks great. To make a change to just one table, I will click to select that table and multiple options will appear. For editing multiple tables, I have a few options. A quick way is to either click and select all tables or go back to the table on the left-hand side, click edit or the pencil icon and make changes. 
Those changes will affect all tables already on my floor plan. Since this is a conference, I want to make sure all the guests can see the front of the room, so I will change the chair layout. If the screen was going to be in a different part of the room, I can do group rotate. Since the lasso option, I know my tables are aligned and evenly spaced, but if I wanted to align tables, like in the earlier birthday example, I would click here. Since I like the placement of my tables and I do not want them to move, I will click to lock them in place. This is a best practice because I will be going into 3D mode soon and I do not want anything to move. This conference is open seating, so I do not need to see the table or seat numbers, so I will click the floor plan view and deselect table and seat numbers to toggle that off. For this conference, I will add a podium and screen at the front of the room. To add these additional items to my floor plan, I will navigate back to floor plans, add items, and select the category. When looking at the items in a category, I will see a venue provided notation above items that are provided by my venue. For more information on tagging venue provided items, please watch our tagging items video. I don't just have to use venue provided items. I can click add items to choose from triple seat floor plans inventory of over 80,000 items. By selecting tools, I have more options such as notes, measurements, and the ability to lock items. Keyboard shortcuts are another handy tool I can access by clicking help. One of my favorites is Control Z to undo. Now, I want to see my space in 3D. I will select the switch to 3D button and select go to 3D. Once my space has loaded into 3D, I can use the options at the bottom right to move throughout the space or click and drag around with my mouse. I like to use 3D once all the tables and chairs have been added and I want to add my details. Clicking on the design button, I can see that my items are now 3D and I have some additional options. When I click the pencil icon or click the ellipses and select edit this table, I now have the option to add items such as runners, napkins, glassware, and more. Just like in 2D, anything I change to this one table will apply to all tables on my floor plan. When an item is selected, I have the ability to rotate it and change the height. When I move an item too close in 3D mode, it will turn red to show me that there is an error, that an item is too close to a wall or another object. Any changes that I make in 3D will automatically appear in any other mode. My final view is 3D top-down. I like to use 3D top-down to give my guest a better view of the space than 2D, but still have the holistic space from above. I can see that my items are still 3D and I have the same additional options as before. To get back to 2D, I can click the floor plan view for all my layers and select 2D. My final step is to name my floor plan. The default name is room name and version number. Best practice for naming conventions is to name it based on the number of guests and configuration, especially if you are sending multiple floor plan options to a guest to choose from, or if you want to reuse this floor plan again, which we will cover in a future video. I will select the Save and Export button. Selecting this button will send the screenshots and floor plans to my Triple Seat account as well as a PDF image to the event owner's email. As I just mentioned, I can create multiple layout versions per event. If I wanted to send multiple floor plan options, I can create another layout by clicking New Layout, and I have the option to use my venue's templates, use a floor plan from another event I've created, or start from scratch. For this event, I will only be sending one floor plan to my guest, so I will not be creating additional versions. Now I'm ready to share this floor plan. When I go back to my event, I can see that a floor plans tab has been added and my floor plans have populated. If I do not immediately see anything populate in this tab, I will click the refresh button. I see the name of the floor plan version at the top. Clicking on that or the view existing layout button will open a new tab and bring me back to floor plans to make any changes. For each floor plan that I created, there will always be a fly-through video and a blueprint image. 
If I went into 3D and floor plans, I will also see 3D images, including the top-down view, a 3D design, and if I added tables, a table design. If multiple versions are created, they will be organized in the floor plans tab by room name and version. I can quickly share any of these images or the fly-through video by inserting them anywhere there is a text field. I will show you how to share floor plans in documents and discussion messages. One way that floor plans can be shared is through documents. I want to add this 2D blueprint image to my BEO. I will navigate to the Docs tab and click into my already created documents. Scrolling down to the Setup field, I will right-click within the text box. Right-clicking will add merge fields. Within the event fields, I will see the floor plan blueprint image to select and then click Update. Now I can share the BEO with my guest by selecting Share and they will easily see the floor plan as a clear image on their BEO. I'll show you what that looks like in a few minutes. Another way I can share floor plans is through discussions. This is a great place to send the fly-through video to get my guest excited about the space and really envision what it will look like. I have created a discussion email template just for this. In settings, discussion email templates, general event templates. When sending a discussion message to a guest, I will select the fly-through template and right-click within the text box to select the video, just like I did in the documents. Now that I have shared the floor plan via the BEO and the fly-through video via discussion message, my guests will have access to both in their guest portal. Clicking on the BEO, my guests can see the 2D image. When my guest clicks on the fly-through link, they will have view-only access to a 3D video of the space that they can pause, reset, and move around to get a detailed view of what it will look like on the day of their event. And that's it! I've set up triple C floor plans, created a floor plan for an event, and shared it quickly with my guest. There are a lot of other advanced features that we'll get into in future videos, so be on the lookout for new resources. Some topics that we plan to cover include how to create templates so that you can quickly access frequently used setup configurations to make your event planning even quicker. We will also talk more about the seating management tool where you can upload a spreadsheet, seat people at tables, assign a meal choice, show dietary restrictions, and even add an RSVP option all directly in the floor plan. We hope this video empowers you to get started creating your floor plans today. As always, if you have any questions about floor plans, please don't hesitate to reach out to our amazing support team, support at triplesseat.com. Thanks for watching.